the number one thing you need to learn about the router CLI is how interface IDs work. In this video, I'll guide you through a lab where you can not only hear about it, but try it for yourself. In this lab, we're going to use Cisco Packet Tracer, and we're going to start here at step one by, quote, exploring fixed interfaces. So here's what I mean by that. In the Packet Tracer file, we have three models of routers set up for you. And it turns out Cisco Packet Tracer not only mimics the command line interface, it mimics specific hardware models of routers. And these routers use different conventions in how they number interfaces. So you can see those differences. So you'll have those three routers there. And right now, none of the uh, expansion slots are populated with hardware. So it's only the fixed interfaces that exist in these three routers to begin. And then we'll add some expansion cards in just a bit. So what I want you to do is get into the command line interface of all three routers of three different models and just see what you can figure out on your own. Now I'm going to demo a few things for you first, but that's the job. It's uh, somewhat open-ended like that, but here are three commands you should try and those will display the interface IDs, which include the type and the numbers. Now, how do you get started? Well, if you look in the video description, there's a .pkt file, download it, open it in Packet Tracer, and you'll see three standalone routers of these three different models. All right, I'll give you a moment to hit pause if you want to go off and start doing that, and then I'm going to start demoing this first step. So here's Packet Tracer, and I've opened the Packet Tracer file. So I'm assuming you're able to do that at this point, and you just see three routers, and they're not even connected with a cable. I don't care about connectivity for this lab. I just want you to see the hardware. So it's the three routers and the models that I talked about just a few moments ago. And your user interface might have a few other things enabled. I just disabled some of the clutter to focus on the routers. So if I clicked on the 2911 and bring up the window, I've already looked around a bit, but I've selected the CLI tab here, but I haven't really done anything with it yet. So if I press enter, there's the host name. Don't have to get into enable mode until you get to the show running config command, but let's just do that one right off the bat. Show running config, and we see this output, and I'll pause for a moment. I'm going to hit the space bar, and you get more output, and none of the output so far are interfaces, and I hit the space bar one more time, and I start to see interfaces. Now, to scroll down a line at a time, I press the enter key, and I did that to display more interfaces, and in fact, that's all of them. So there are three fixed interfaces in this particular router. It's a 2911, a real life 2911, back when you could have bought a new one, or if you buy a used one, you'll see three fixed interfaces. You can't take them out of the router, and they're named Gigabit Ethernet something, Gigabit Ethernet 00, 01, and 02 as you see there. All right, you could have seen that with another command like show IP interface brief. I'm going to move that up a little bit, but you see those over here on the left-hand side of that highlight. So that's what I want you to do is go look around and see for these three models, what are the fixed interfaces with no modular devices added? And I know that they're fixed because I set up the packet tracer file. So if you look over here at the physical tab, you get this probably hard to see version of the hardware. And if you tap on the zoom in button, let me expand that a little bit. It shows you both sides up here. It's the top and here's the back or the, excuse me, the front and the back. And over here are the fixed ports. The ones that we just saw and these mostly charcoalish black sections that are rectangles, those are the four expansion slots that take WIX, um, WAN interface cards. And if you get really, really, really close, you can see that there's some numbering here. You probably can't see it in the video, but you may be able to see it when you're sitting there at your computer. So look at those slot numbers and those will matter in the upcoming part of the lab. So, I knew that we didn't have any of those modular slots populated, but now you can do the same and see, yeah, there's nothing in those. Um, we're going to add those at the next step. Next up, you're going to use Packet Tracer to do the equivalent of adding hardware 
expansion cards into these routers. So you're going to see a hardware interface. There are going to be two or more open slots in each router. And I want you to start on the right hand side of the user interface. So fill the slots right to left per the de below detail. So in the 2911, I want you to add this card called a HWIC 1GE SFP. It's a one gigabit card, one gigabit ethernet card. Whereas this next one is a four port ethernet switch card. And the next one is a two port serial card. So far right, next to it, next to it. And then in the 1841, add these two cards starting on the far right and working to the left. And on the 4321, add these two cards starting on the far right working to the left. You do not need to memorize or learn what those models are or what those cards are. For real life, they might be of some interest. Packet Tracer tends to lag behind more modern and current devices. So I would say these products, none of them are being sold currently anymore. The 2911 is probably the oldest in history. These were popular back in the 2010s uh, out in the marketplace, but they're still great for learning. So I'm gonna give you a few seconds to hit pause and I'm gonna then demo. So if you wanna go ahead and try it on your own with no demonstration, go ahead and hit pause and get to it. Uh, otherwise, watch out for the demo here and I'll show you how to add the cards. For this next step in lab, I've asked you to add those hardware devices. Now, these expansion modules over here on the left side of this window, let me move the window around there. That's the one for the 2911. And over here are the modules that we can drag and drop. Now, I had asked you in the slides to move the one or to place the one with the 1GE in it. See how I touch that and I'm hovering? I can move this around in the user interface. And if I pause there for a second, if you look real closely, it, it kind of looks like piece of computer hardware. And I said, for the conventions of this lab, let's put it on the far right. And I do that and we get, oh no, an error message. What did Wendell do? Well, it says, cannot add a module when the power is on. So you literally, to do this exercise in Packet Tracer, go down here to the power on off button. If you look closely, it's got a little bit of a green there. So tap it once and it no longer has green, it's off. So now it's off and now you can install hardware. Just like in real life, you shouldn't install the hardware with the power on. And then the next card I asked for was the four port ethernet switch card, filling right to left. And then the last one was HWIC 2T, which is a two port serial card. And with that convention, we are leaving this leftmost expansion slot unpopulated. Now, if you go back to the CLI, which might be your inclination, you'll get over here and it says, hey, <laughs> you gotta turn it back on, <laughs> right? So it will remind you, but it gives you back to the physical tab. Now tap, it's on, and you can see some simulated messages down at the bottom as if the device is booting up and loading the operating system. It's much faster in Packet Tracer than a real device, what, well, five or six seconds. And it says, press return to get started. And now you're back in the command line interface. Next, I want you to explore the new interface IDs that get added. And one of the reasons I have you add the hardware yourself is the interface ID numbering is tied to those slot numbers where you put the hardware. So explore those, and I don't wanna spoil the discovery for you. So discover the relationship, look at those, see if you can come up with, hey, this appears to be what's happening on this router, and this is what's happening on that model router and post a comment for me and tell me, hey Wendell, you asked us to describe how the interface ID numbering is working and explain it to me in a few sentences in a comment to this video, all right? So just discover what those new interface IDs should be. There, there'll be lots more now that you added more hardware, all right? So if you'd like to go ahead and do that, I'll give you a moment to hit pause, but I'm gonna demo a little bit of this after the pause button. So let's look at those interface IDs on the 2911 for just a moment. And we've added the hardware and just booted the device. And instead of show run, let's just do show IP int brief. And before I hit enter, remember it was three gigabit interfaces. Each had a two digit numbering scheme, something slash something, right? And now we see a bunch more. So this is what I want you to explore. And notice we've got these two serial interfaces. We added a two port serial card. We've got two serial interfaces. 
we have a gigabit Ethernet port with three numbers, in this case 0 slash 0 slash 0, rather than the two digits separated by a slash that we had in the fixed ports that we looked at a few moments ago. And then we have these fast Ethernet ports, and those are the ones that came in that Ethernet switching expansion card. All right, so that gives you a little bit of guidance. What I want you to do is to think about these numbers, the, the number part of the interface IDs, and try to figure out what happened when you added a card into a particular slot. Why did the router assign those interface IDs? Because, get this, if you would put them in different slots, the interface ID numbers would be different in the router. All right, so we'll make it a little bit of a puzzle, and you can do that on all three routers and leave me a comment in the video as to what you think the formula is. So want to do a little more? Well, here are a couple options for you. First, you can create and verify a loopback interface. So if you remember that from the explainer video, just interface loopback one interface loop back to in config mode and you could give it a description command for instance if you want to configure something there and then see what you see in those show commands that list interfaces. Alternately, experiment more with the interface ID numbering and here's what you could do. You could turn off any of your routers or all of them so power them off, remove the cards, and re-add them. But maybe this time, instead of working right to left through the open slots, add the hardware left to right. And that's important to realize then, if you do that, those interface IDs are going to be different. So go and check out the new interface IDs and confirm your thinking on how those particular models of routers do things. Before I let you go, I really felt like I should demo one other thing. If you want to reorder the cards in the chassis, turn off the router, and then you've got to drag and drop the cards back over to this left-hand list. See how I'm dragging them over? And now you've basically done the equivalent of removing the cards, and then you can start adding them back. I think this is the right order. Left to right, if you like my idea about adding things in, you can even add an extra one if you want. Say you want some more serial ports, put those in, then turn it back on, and that's how you repopulate it, and check out those interface IDs. All right, I'm really out of here this time. Hey, thanks for hanging around through the whole lab. Hope you did it. Hope you understood the numbering. If you don't, leave me a comment. I'll walk you through it, and hopefully that helps you down the road, and it'll just be second nature to you. If you're new here, subscribe and click a bell. That always helps, and leave a comment, and click a like. That helps me with the YouTube feedback algorithm. All right. Talk to you folks later.